modeling concept. Okay. Deterministic means what? Can anyone tell me what is the meaning of deterministic? What do you understand by this word deterministic? Uh, you can write in the chat box also. If you want to speak, you can unmute yourself and can speak also. What is the meaning of this word deterministic? Uh, what do you understand? Have you heard this word previously somewhere? I guess so. Everyone? Uh, I'm asking one question. What is the meaning of this deterministic? Uh, can you write the, what do you understand by this word deterministic in the chat box? Yes. Come on. Are you still sleeping? Come on. Wake up. Class has been started. What is the meaning of deterministic? Come on. Anyone? Come on. Wait up. By this time, you can Google itself and can answer what is the meaning of deterministic. Uh, philosophical theory, uh, copy paste, copy paste from Google. And but there was a full paragraph added there. And determining what you are determining. <laughs> okay, no issue, Aditya. Uh, anyone else? What is the meaning of deterministic? Uh, yeah, see, listen. Uh, in different context, we have a different meaning of a word like. So in particular scenario, when I am tell, I have given you the context that in which context we are using this deterministic modeling, you have to think in that context only, right? So deterministic means to determine or to identify. And then yeah, um, still not there. I need some more answers. Come on, everyone think about it. I think you are still sleeping. Uh, Ashriya has written determined towards a uh, no, This is not done. Come on. Uh, such a simple word, deterministic. Come on, come on. Uh, uh, determining factor, uh, no, 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 no. I think in context, beta, as in English, you know, uh, context totally depend in context, the meaning of the word, right? In different contexts, we use the same word, but it has different meaning, right? So in this particular context of operating system where we <clears throat> have to compare different CPU scheduling algorithm, then uh, what may be the perfect meaning in this context of this word deterministic, right? <clears throat> As the in first answer of Aditya was also right, that it is a philosophical theory, yeah, I am agree. But in this particular context, what we can say that the meaning of this deterministic. Uh, to choose perfect way, mm, nah, not like that. I need two to three more answers, then we will discuss. Come on. Come on. Come on, Vita. You can, okay, I am giving you liberty. Do the Google, find the answer. What is the meaning of deterministic? Come on, you are a computer science student, no? Come on, I am giving you liberty to use the internet also. Everyone is on internet, right? How many participants? 25, including me. So use your internet and find the meaning of this word deterministic. Uh, uh, what is Krishnam? Determined to achieve certain results. Uh, not like that. Mm -hmm. You are close, but not that perfect meaning that I am looking for. Come on. Two more answers. I need two more answers to proceed. Come on. Come on, beta. Oh, ho. students, what are you doing? Come on, do it first. Are you, your Google is not working? Determine to achieve certain result, to have certainty to solve problem. Nice. This is what I'm looking for, Priyam. Very good, Priyam. To have a certainty to solve a problem means, uh, and there is no randomness. Very good, Priyam. Shabash. So uh, Aditi has also written something. No randomness is involved in the development of future state of the system. <laughs> okay. So your internet is working, right? Aditi, good. 
So Krishna, uh, what Priyam was saying that uh, to have a certainty to solve a problem, right? Means uh, in which deterministic modeling, what we are going to do, we have a, a certain, uh, perfect situations, which we have in which we apply some kind of uh, CP scheduling algorithm and find out in which scenario which algorithm gives you minimum average waiting time, right? Now in future, if we are getting some same type of uh, setting of environment, then we understand that okay we are certain about this that this particular algorithm will work better in this particular scenario right so this is what it is called deterministic modeling in which there is no randomness means which in which we have a certainty means a determining deterministic uh, approach is there because we have a certain uh, point of view that in this particular uh, setting of environment uh, this particular algorithm is gonna work better okay so let's start uh, deterministic modeling uh, this is good I need this kind of interaction in my class. Only then I can understand that uh, you are all awake and uh, studying this class, right? So this and this activity can be happen properly in the physical uh, mode of teaching. Let's have this in online mode also. Okay, so let's start deterministic modeling concept. Uh, what is deterministic modeling? Deterministic modeling is one type of analytic evaluation. Why it is analytic evaluation? Because we are going to analyze in which particular scenario, which algorithm is going to give you minimum average waiting time. So in this method, it takes a particular predetermined workload and defines the performance of each algorithm for that workload. Very pretty much simple setting is here that we have predetermined workload, right? And based upon that particular environment, we apply each algorithm in that setting. Now, which algorithm gives you better performance, we will choose and we will have perception that in which in this particular environment, this algorithm is going to work better. So this is very simple deterministic modeling. Now, what is, let's have an example and find out how this deterministic modeling works. Uh, let's, we have a workload as below we are having five processes p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 average uh, arrival time is given as zero means all the five processes are arrived at time zero burst time has been given as 10 for p1 29 for p2 3 for p3 7 for p4 and 12 for p5 now what we have to do we have to consider fcfs first come first serve non-preemptive shortest job first and uh, round robin which have a time a quantum of 10 milliseconds now, uh, these scheduling algorithms are going to apply on this uh, set of processes. You have to tell which algorithm is going to work better in for finding the minimum average waiting time. Now, take your pen and paper out and firstly start FCFS. Let's see. Uh, firstly, draw the Gantt chart. No, then we will compare that. Are you working properly or not? So everyone is having pen and paper. If you are not with your pen and paper, I am giving you one minute to have pen and paper and let's start come on come on come on for our fcfs you have to just simply find the minimum average waiting time i don't need uh, for all p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 average waiting time simply give the minimum average waiting time firstly go for fcfs everyone firstly go for fcfs so uh, draw the gantt chart let's see are you working properly uh, and give the minimum average waiting time in the chat box for fcfs okay let's start once you are done with fcfs please write the answer in the chat box that minimum average waiting time in fcfs algorithm is this much and here you have given the time unit also which is in millisecond okay so do it fast Okay. Draw the Gantt chart for FCFS. And find the minimum average waiting time.
Yes, anyone? None? No answer? Still, I am waiting. FCFS, Aponizing 28 millisecond. Okay, let's wait for others answer. FCFS, 28 unit time. Um, beta unit time has been given uh, in millisecond, okay? So Firoz, please put millisecond there. Ananya, 28 millisecond, 28 millisecond, Chitranshu, okay. Rohit, 28 millisecond, okay. Two more answers, two more answers, and then we will proceed. I need two more answers, come on. Webo, very good, 28 millisecond, one more, okay, sorry, Ash, good. Uh, Priyam beta, no unit time here. You, we have given milliseconds, right? So you can use that unit of time that is milliseconds. So let's start. Uh, everyone is on the same page that that uh, average, minimum average waiting time is 28 milliseconds for the FS. FS. So just tell me that you have, have the same Gantt chart, yes or no. If there is any difference with this Gantt chart, simply say if you are having the same, then write here so that we will not calculate the minimum average waiting time for FCFS. Uh, everyone, please tell me, do you have the same Gantt chart? Yes. Okay, that's cool. So this is the minimum average waiting time you have calculated. I will buy your answer that it is 28 millisecond. Now go for non-primitive SJF. Now go for non-primitive SJF. Non-primitive shortest job first. Now go for this one. Come on. Non-primitive SJF scheduling. non-primitive shortest job first what is the meaning of non-primption non-primption means once you find out the shortest job you cannot preempt you have to finish it if you have selected any shortest job first and then second shortest job and then next and then next okay non-primitive sjf scheduling so everyone is practicing that's good but not everyone is answering. This is not good. I need everyone's collaboration. Now, this is a class of you. You have to study. I'm just uh, like uh, telling you how to do these kinds of things. Okay, Aparna, 30 milliseconds. Ayush, 13 milliseconds. Very quick, Aparna, Ayush. Um, both are having the same answer. Okay. Uh, let's see what about others. Others are working. Uh, uh, till then, Aparna and Ayush, you can cross-check your answer. Uh, upon Ananya has uh, given the answer 13 milliseconds. Very good. Okay. We are having three answers and four answers. Everyone is on the same page. 13 milliseconds, 13 milliseconds, 13 milliseconds, 13 milliseconds. Okay. 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 Uh, two more answers, then we will proceed. 13. One more answer. Okay, cool. Let's have a diagram, Gantt chart. Uh, let me know that you are having the same Gantt chart for this non-primitive SGF. Yes or no? Do you have the same Gantt chart? Firstly, we have to pick P3 and then P4 and then P1 and then P5 and then P2, right? And in this manner, you can find out the minimum average waiting time, right? Okay, everyone is done. So let's go for the last one which one was round robin with the time quantum given as 10 milliseconds go for it uh, till now uh, fcfs what was the 28 millisecond was the minimum average waiting time and non-primitive sjf we have found it uh, 13 millisecond right yes so till now non-primitive sjf is leading this particular environment so let's see what about round robin with time quantum as 10 milliseconds Firstly, draw the Gantt chart. Uh, without drawing the Gantt chart, you will not get the full marks in this numerical. So firstly, you have to draw the Gantt chart properly, right? So Gantt chart is the backbone of this type of questions. If you are done with the Gantt chart, you can solve it very easily. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Round robin time quantum given as 10 milliseconds.
tick tick one, tick tick two, tick tick three. <laughs> 23 milliseconds. Okay, Chitranshu. He has got the answer. 23 milliseconds. Aparna, 23 milliseconds. Same answer. Uh, Chitranshu. Aparna. Abhishek, 23 milliseconds. Cool. Aditya, 23 milliseconds. Okay. Okay. Three more answers. Suryanshu. Suryans. And then two more answers, please. Suryansh has given 23 milliseconds. Two more answers, please. Webho, very good. 23 milliseconds. One more answer, please. One more answer. One more answer, please. I need one more answer. Come on. Uh, you all are, you all have calculator with you, no? You have mobile phones also. Do the sum very quickly. Simple addition and division operation. Come on. Come on. Web or OED. One more answer, please. I need one more answer. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Only Chitranshu, Aparna, Abhishek, Aditya, Ayush, Suryan, Shweba, Rohit. What about others? Uh, 31 participants, including me. So only five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven answers. What about others? I need one more answer, please. Come on, give one more answers. I need one more answer. Okay, Ananya, 23 milliseconds, good. Krishna, 16.2 millisecond. Oh, we have got some variation in the answer now. Krishna is saying 16.2 millisecond. Means he has a different Gantt chart, I guess. So let's see if you are having the same Gantt chart or different. Tell me, do you have the same Gantt chart? Krishna, please look at the Gantt chart and all others also. Please look at the Gantt chart. Tell me, do you have the same Gantt chart which I am having? Uh, Ananya, yes. Uh, Krishna? Please tell me you have the different answer than others. And Krishnam, do you have some different Gantt chart? Adarsh, no. Adarsh is having some different Gantt chart. Okay. So we are having some variation in the round of me. So let me solve this question. I will solve this question for you. Why you are having some different value? Why you are having different value? Okay. One. Sir, so got it, my mistake, okay? So you have, let me solve this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight column I need. I need eight column and one row. Eight columns, I need nine columns and two row. Others, I also got my mistake. Okay, no issue, let me solve this question. So firstly, we are having P1. I am looking for the, this round robin, P1. Firstly, we have to choose, and what is the time quantum? And this is 10 milliseconds. So we will start with zero and finish with 10, right? So P1 is done. So then we will pick the P2. P2, then we will give it 10 milliseconds. And then uh, we are having P3. P3, only 23 is finished. Then we are having P4. P4, seven. So 23 plus seven, this is 30. And then we are having P5, P5, then we have given it to 40. And then we have to move on to P2. Then 20, uh, 10 has been minus 29 minus 10, that is 19. So we have to give in 10 more than 50. Then uh, this uh, P3 and P4 has finished. Now go for P5, 10, 12 minus 10, that is two. So we have got two and then um, what is the remaining time was like P2 was there and 29 minus 20 remaining 9. So 52 plus 9, we are having 61. So let's match with the Gantt chart, what I have in the PPT. P1 and then P2. Uh oh, where is my P1, then P2, then P3, then P4, P5. Okay, then P2, P5, P5 and p2 right 
so this is how uh, once you have draw the gantt chart you will get the average betting so now tell me uh, in this particular environment uh, which uh, algorithm works better in finding the minimum average betting time tell me uh, fcfs non primitive sjf and a round robin uh, better it was not simple sjf this is non primitive shortage of first be specific with your answer right so sjf is of two type primitive and non primitive but in this particular setting uh, we, we we have a competition between uh, these three only we can have a competition with others also but for this uh, understanding of this particular deterministic modeling concept we have taken only three you can go for any so in this particular setting what we have found uh, can you write in one shot what is the minimum average waiting time of fcfs non primitive sjf and round robin in one shot can you please write the answer for me anyone uh, in one shot please write the all three answer um, with F, like written as fcfs uh, 28 millisecond non primitive sjf 13 millisecond and round robin uh, with time quantum 10 millisecond this is 23 milliseconds please uh, anyone can write it for me in the chat box complete answer come on anyone anyone who is having the laptop or desktop can write very quickly then those who are having mobile uh, just give a favor a favor to me okay thank you ananya then uh, ananya krishna mo okay, let me read a non primitive shortage of us this is 13 millisecond fcfs 28 millisecond round robin 23 millisecond right so in the end uh, when you are explaining this deterministic modeling suppose you have got this question in the examination and uh, two to three times uh, this has been asked in the examination also that you have to explain what is deterministic modeling in cpu scheduling so once you are done with this example or any example you can have of your own choice and then in the last we have to make one more heading which is what analysis make an heading of analysis please note it down somewhere that how you have to tackle this type of question in the examination uh, you can uh, after completing this finding the minimum average waiting time and given all these three in one shot in the end you can uh, write a heading like analysis or you can have an heading like inference means you have to use some tentative words so that uh, examiner can understand that you are uh, some intelligent student and have some broad perspective about this subject right so you use some very uh, like uh, heavy words like analysis inference right this kind of thing and then what you have to write in the analysis section uh, you have to write very neatly that uh, as per our analysis we have find out that in uh, in this particular setting of environment we have in first come first of scheduling we have find out that minimum average waiting time was uh, what 28 millisecond and then we applied this uh, no on primitive sjf scheduling in on the same environment and we have find out that this is uh, to be taken out as 23 millisecond and for what round robin with time quantum given as 10 millisecond we have this much of minimum average waiting time therefore we can infer that in this particular environment what is the best algorithm is what non primitive sjf okay so you have to write the same things which you have you are seeing in this particular question but you can write this in your own words so that you can have a different look of answer with others right because whenever in the examination uh, uh, if i am giving you the, this uh, content to everyone then everyone is having the same answer right so whenever a copy is checking in the examination then suppose uh, every answer is very perfect like for a then he has got the perfect marks then if the answer of b is also is having that perfect answer with the same uh, set of words then he he or she will get some minus marks than the previous one because examiner has already seen that these kind of uh, phrases and words and like word structure and the content is the same then uh, there is a um, like thinking of examiner that okay maybe he has cheated or something else so be innovative in your answers whenever in the examination at least uh, have a different perspective than those students who, who are in front of you and in, they are in your uh, after that at least in some students which are in your front 
because uh, they copy is bundled in like this only. So uh, firstly, they have seen their answer, then you have to be innovative in your answer. So a different answer would do the needful. Okay, so we are done with this deterministic modeling. Let's see uh, what are the benefits of using deterministic modeling. Okay, and there is an analysis section is also here so that you can see that you can write also in your answer. So what is analysis we have find out? The deterministic modeling is simple and fast, right? It gives us exact number. As you can see that we are having exact figure like 28 millisecond, 23 millisecond, 13 millisecond, right? And uh, the main use of deterministic modeling are in describing scheduling algorithm and provide examples, right? So we have what? like the machine modeling and describing scheduling algorithm and providing examples. With this, what we have, we have simple example. If in future a sim similar setting is come, then with the help of this example, we can find out which will be the answer. It means which algorithm will work better in this environment. So what was the first one? Determin deterministic modeling is simple and fast. It gives us exact number, allowing us to compare the algorithms. However, it requires exact number for inputs and its answer apply only to those cases. So this is the limitation of deterministic modeling. Uh, so if someone asks you what is the limitation of deterministic modeling, then you can say that in deterministic modeling, we have to give exact number for inputs and its answer can apply for only those cases only. So this is the limitation of deterministic modeling. Limitation you can think of as a drawback because this is deterministic modeling. You have to find the answer in numbers only. So we cannot uh, change our inputs, okay? Okay, so what is the next? In cases where we are running the same program over, so if so, you can have a question that where we can use deterministic modeling if you are using the exact number of inputs always. So here is the answer. In cases where we are running the same program over and over again, and can measure the program's processing requirements exactly, we may be able to use deterministic modeling to select a scheduling algorithm. Means in which scenario you can use this deterministic modeling where you are running the same program over and over again. So this is the context of using this deterministic modeling. And some more analysis are like furthermore, over a set of examples, deterministic modeling may indicate trends that can be analyzed and proved separately. By this, you can, you have find the trend that in, in this particular setting, that uh, first number one was shortage of first non-preemptive, then round robin, then FCFS. Then with this, you have got the lead, you can go for some more research in this area and can find the trends that can be analyzed and proved separately. For example, it can be shown that for the environment described all processes and their time available at time zero, the shortage of first policy will always result in the minimum waiting time, right? So you can prove this hypothesis also. Hypothesis is what? Your assumption that this will work or not that will be find out by doing some practical. So for example, it can be shown that for the environment described, all processes and their time available at time zero, the SJF policy will always result in the minimum waiting time. Okay, so we are done with today's class. Let me quickly revise what we have studied today, deterministic modeling concept. Uh, what is, it is an analytic evaluation. We have predefined workload and with the help of that, we find the performance of each algorithm. Then we have seen a numerical in which we have to apply FCFS, non-preemptive SGF and the round robin. And, and then we have seen that uh, in FCFS, we have find 28 millisecond minimum average waiting time. Non-preemptive SGF, it was like 13 millisecond and then round robin, it was what? 23 millisecond was a minimum average waiting time. So we can infer that in this particular environment, non-preemptive SGF can work better than other algorithm given. So this is simple and fast, exact numbers are given to you. And what is the limitation of using the deterministic modeling? That uh, it works on the exact number for inputs only and answers apply only to those particular environment only. So uh, with the help of examples, we can find out the trends. And when we are using this deterministic modeling, it can work where in the context when we are running the same program over and over again. So. Uh, we can find that uh, some hypothesis with the help of this we can prove like uh, SGF can works better in this particular environment or any other thing. So this deterministic modeling is just for to uh, analyze 
that how your algorithms work in different environment so are we good with today's class everyone understand the concept of deterministic modeling yes yes <laughs>